Uh, primero en español, porque estoy en México y voy a agradecer la, la invitación y un honor de estar acá eh, eh, de vuelta en, en, bueno, en mi país. Eh, muchos, desafortunadamente, yo creo que he estado tanto tiempo fuera que ya muchos mexicanos no saben o no, me, o no, 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 no saben que soy mexicano, eh, eh, pero lo soy. Eh, la Ciudad de México me encanta mucho, me gusta mucho, viví aquí un tiempo. Eh, yo soy del norte, yo soy de la gloriosa pero peligrosa ciudad de Monterrey, eh, Nuevo León. Eh, y muy, encantado de estar aquí, muchas gracias y, y, y me, me, me ha encantado platicar con algunos de ustedes. Um, ok, now in English, it has to be in English, unfortunately. So mind my uh, Zorro accent, Speedy Gonzalez accent actually. And, uh, Okay, uh, you know the drill, uh, the panelists, uh, actually I haven't, well, I, I will introduce them in a minute, but you know the drill, uh, they're gonna uh, make uh, opening remarks for five to seven minutes each, and then we're gonna open the floor for questions and answers, and it is my experience that uh, the best questions are the ones that you guys made, uh, you're gonna have uh, microphones to your uh, disposal, so you can ask the questions, and uh, The less questions I ask, the more interesting, really, it's going to be this panel. And actually, I don't feel that much uh, like work today, so if you ask all the questions, it's going to be fine for me, <laughs> actually. Uh, okay, and uh, we have a very short time. Uh, you're going to give me the, the cut of time, right? And so we're going to have to be out uh, in 45 minutes, actually. One hour. Okay, you let me know. So, um, I'm going to, is there anyone that wants to be the first one, or, or I pick, or what? Your job to pick. Uh, yeah, I pick. Okay, I'll shoot. Okay, so we're gonna have Mr. Uh, it's in the order that it's uh, uh, scripted here. Mr. Helmi Abulish, Vice President, Vice Vice Chairman and Managing Director of Second Group, which is yeah. you. Thank you very much. Mr. Guido Bartels, General Manager, Global Energy and Utilities Industry of IBM. Thank you, Mr. Guido. Uh, And also Charles Person from Gridwise Alliance. Okay, Alex Mac, Mac, McGilberry. Very good. Mac, how you pronounce it? That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, senior fellow uh, accountability, accountability, and Scott Nykist, leader sustainability and resource productivity initiative, initiative of McKinsey and Company, and that should be you. So according to this order, then Mr. Help me, please. Yeah, thank you very much. I would like to speak about a real solution uh, I witnessed for the last 33 years in Egypt myself. The real solution I'm, I'm going to offer to you is sustainable agriculture. We heard about agriculture and its impact on climate change. But I would like also to touch on other development challenges like livelihoods, food security, poverty, uh, water and others. Now, what, what is my experience on, on the issue from 1977, when my father established Sekem in Egypt, in the desert, uh, with an impossible uh, target? His target was to prove for the first time in Egypt or Africa or anywhere in the region that organic agriculture is capable of uh, reclaiming desert uh, within a short time and produce healthy food in a competitive way for the local market Um, he uh, wanted to do it in a fair trade certified way, which was not there 33 years ago. He wanted to prove through uh, innovation and R&D that all this is going to be competitive to conventional agricultural systems. And he wanted to invest into the local community, uh, the villages around, uh, which today is called corporate social responsibility, but the term did not exist. And uh, he wanted to give all the people a full opportunity to develop their human potential by giving them 10% of the time, the working time, for their development. Now, the question to you, is this a good business case for Mexico or anywhere else? Uh, it was an, uh, an unrealistic business case for his family and his friends in Egypt when he started. What happened? Today, I can tell you that uh, about 70,000 acres in Egypt, which is 1% of the arable land in Egypt, are organic certified. About 60,000 people work in organic agriculture in Egypt, which is 20% more than in conventional agriculture on the same area. So we employ more people. The people have a 20% better income 
through organic uh, agriculture. They use up to 40% less water in the same area for the same yields, for the same crops. And uh, they were able to prove that through the compost they need instead of chemical fertilizers, they avoid the uh, emittance of methane from biomass equal one ton of compost, one ton of CO2. So we are speaking about hundreds of thousands of tons every year and uh, about the possibility to work on climate change and work on compost and living soils. Now the impact of this was that uh, today Egypt is using 95% less pesticides because we could prove that with sustainable agriculture, biocontrol, you can uh, reduce the the insects on cotton, for example, without pesticides. We are able today to prove that we can handle all kinds of uh, insects or diseases with microorganisms and predators, which are good insects, not bad insects. And we were also able to prove that what we do is as efficient or more efficient than conventional agriculture without using energy without depleting phosphate, which is a, a very, uh, very uh, sensitive issue in Egypt. We don't have enough phosphate. In conventional agriculture, we are running out of phosphate. In organic agriculture, we are keeping it in the system. Um, so today, Booth and Company, one of your competitors, <laughs> is doing a study with the, with the Egyptian government to prove, to study whether sustainable agriculture for the national economy is providing cheaper not only better products, but cheaper products. Having in mind health impact, environment impact, subsidies, which we don't use, which conventional people use. So I, uh, I, I think there's a lot of development uh, uh, benefits there. But the question is, now, does it affect climate change? I spoke about compost, but there's another dimension, soil. We were able to prove that over the last 30 years, every year per hectare, we were sequestering one ton of carbon in every hectare. We are speaking about millions of tons, and this equals the millions of tons of potential in the world for uh, organic farming and sustainable agriculture. So, so far to the agricultural part, I'm running slightly out of, of time, so I will cover quickly two, three other aspects. In our whole value chain, uh, we were able to, uh, to communicate about organic agriculture. We were able to provide 65 to 70 percent of our products to the local market. And I have to tell you that Egypt, with a GDP per capita of $1,200 less than Mexico, has a higher organic uh, agricultural products in the market, in the local market, through this uh, project. We, we want uh, to also uh, communicate with our consumers. This has been mentioned by every panel. We speak about carbon footprints for every product. We speak about water footprints. We speak about organic. We speak about fair trade. We are communicating all the time. And by this, today, we are market leaders in herbal teas in the region. We are producing 500 million tea bags of herbal teas for Egypt and the region. We are the market leaders for natural medicine in the region. And we were the first in the world to produce organic cotton garments and extra long staple organic cotton for Egypt and the other countries. So we are market leaders. We are competitive with what we do through communication to our customers. And our, our most important Stakeholders, of course, are our people. We have about 2,500 people working in the company, uh, other than the farmers. And these 2,500 people are all part of a learning living organization where everyone has targets beyond financial targets on sustainability issues, energy saving, water saving, social, environmental impacts. So working with our people, empowering our people to do the job exactly the same as has been said in panels here is very, very important. And last, not least, what we do for future generations is that through the Second Development Foundation, we established a kindergarten, a school, a vocational training center, recently a university, where thousands of kids and students are educated, and all with a focus on sustainable development. We cannot demand from future generations to know anything about the issue if they don't know what is solar energy, what is water, what is scarcity, what is climate change. And this is what is happening in our schooling system. So we try to educate future generations. So concluding, it's a real solution. It tackles development challenges, but it also tackles climate change, water scarcity, and other things. And uh, I believe that it tackles very, very importantly an ethical issue, 
which for me is the reason for the financial crisis, the climate crisis, the food crisis, uh, and it gives back the ethical dimension of competitiveness, efficiency, plus responsibility and responsible behavior to our planet and people. Thank you. Thank you, Master Abolish. Now, uh, Guido Bartels, please. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, so it was an interesting room when I came in this morning. I was not here yesterday. It was very dark, and it's very dark in this room. It's almost like uh, uh, I think it deserves more, more light, uh, this, this whole topic. Um, and, and great to be here. Uh, I think it's a, a critically important discussion. Uh, I listened to the previous panel. Um, uh, where uh, one of the topics I want to discuss about also already came up. But I'm, uh, as said, Alberto, I'm leading IBM's uh, energy utility business globally, uh, which, of course, I always tell everybody in IBM, of all the industries we serve, that is the most important one. Always biased by your current job. Uh, and the other thing I do is I chair an organization called the Gridwise Alliance, which in uh, uh, the English, like Americans call it an advocacy organization, or other word is perhaps a lobby organization, an NGO. Um, and uh, I would li like to spend some time on that topic. In, in IBM, uh, some of you might have been pestered, and I heard some of my panelists talk about it, by some of the commercials <laughs> in the airports, when we travel through the airports, had the whole notion around the smarter planet. Uh, I, uh, I get kicked by our CEO, and I don't spend at least one minute on that topic. Uh, but it's a very simple notion. It's basically the notion that we live in a world which is increasingly uh, instrumented, interconnected, and intelligent. What basically means that if you start at the first eye, instrumented, today there are about a billion transistors for each of us, for every human being on the face of the earth. So uh, you get intelligence in almost every object, not only what we used to recognize as computers. High level of instrumentation, ability to measure uh, and sense uh, uh, situations and, pro and, uh, and conditions, etc. Second, uh, in an increasingly interconnected world, uh, in a world where we have a pervasive internet infrastructure, so not only can we capture data, we can also communicate data in a, a very increasing manner. And the third one, intelligence. So now we have this ability to, bring, uh, to capture data about almost everything. Uh, we have high-performance high computing uh, uh, technology, computers, uh, which, with enormous ability to, uh, to uh, push through transactions per second. Uh, and we have high performance business software analytics. So out of all this data, we can make sense. And what this basically does and what it allows us to do that we can make the most complex systems which make up this world uh, from healthcare to transport to energy smarter. So that whole notion, a big push for our company and clearly one of those topics is uh, a modernized elect uh, electric system. And that bridges nicely into my other role, <coughs> chairman, chairman of the Gridwise Alliance. It's an organization which has grown only over the last year 70% of the membership, it's an organization which lobbies, advocates for drastically modernizing the US electric system uh, by applying state-of-the-art informa information and communication technology. And why do we believe that's such an important topic? And I've heard many people say of their respective topics, it's the enabler, but we also say that of smart grid. We look at it as the ultimate enabler, because we all agree with the notion uh, that the largest part of CO2 emissions is coming vi via power generation, ge transmission, generation, and transmission and distribution, and inefficient use of energy, and uh, then putting a smart grid in place, which ba basically enables us to integrate renewables, to make uh, demand-side management possible for all of us to manage our energy consumption more prudently, to integrate electric vehicles massively uh, in the future, uh, etc., then I think it's not that difficult to understand why this is such an important notion. Now, smart grid does not, not mean that the grid as we had it in the developed world was not smart up till now. It did a fantastic job. It is, has been foundational for economic growth and has helped develop societies in the uh, developed world as we know it today. But as we move into the next decades, the next 100 years, we live in a digitized age where people have fancy iPads versus notebooks, uh, where, where, where we have uh, massive concerns around climate change, uh, uh, concerns about economic growth, uh, where the consumer wants to be much more interactive, involved with a critical service like energy, uh, then for this grid to play the same uh, foundational role, for the electric system to play the same foundational role, and modernization of that system is critically important. So that's what we advocate for in uh, the Gridwise Alliance. What we also have done, we have brought, uh, we have helped other countries set up similar organizations, from Australia to Korea, Japan, India, uh, Canada, Ireland, uh, talking with other countries like Brazil, China, South Africa, to all set up organizations where they can bring an ecosystem together behind this notion of a modernized uh, electric system. 